Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, it's actually going to be a Game of Thrones observations, thoughts, and what the fuck moments from the finale. Because it was a crazy finale. Like, it was a lot of spectacle, so that's what I'm going to talk about. And also, I didn't post on Sunday, and I'm really sorry about that. The thing is, I had a video ready to be posted, and then when I was about to post it, I couldn't find it. So it was like some people are conspiring against me to post it's sad but then that's just what it is what it is so anyways my name is ifwa hit the subscribe button and then let's do this game of thrones finale so my first thought or my first thing about game of thrones was the reunions there's so many reunions you know the lannister children were all in one place at the same time i couldn't take it the clegane brothers Brienne and Sandor Clegane, Tyrion and Bronn, Tyrion and Podrick, you know, all these little reunions and then the first time meetups like Daenerys and Cersei meeting up. Who else got the whole vibe from the two of them meeting up? I was, I was so entranced, I was in love with that first meetup, you know, with the whole I arrived late and all those other things. But I think it was a good thing, like for like the first thought or like for the first 10 minutes of the finale the reunions and like the way they were all trying to like show each other something was really cool what i didn't like were the events leading to the reunion so that's i'll touch on that later but i didn't like the events leading to the reunion so my second thought is why is Euron Greyjoy still in the show people why is he still in the show because you know when the season was about to start i was like okay let's see if Euron would be like the a huge big bad of season eight like someone to be afraid of and at this point i'm still not afraid of Euron. like i get that he's fearful but you know Euron in the books right it's not this Euron we are seeing and i get like the actor is like is putting in his hundred percent efforts but still it's like he's been relegated to the sidelines and i'm really sad that it's going to be like the dawn story and if they know that they introduce Euron for it to be like the dawn stories they should just they shouldn't have just introduced him in the first place he should have been cancelled and i read a leaked finale script and i know what people are going to say why the hell did i read a leaked finale script but the point is i read it let's move on but so in this leaked finale script it looks like a lot of the stuff in the scripts didn't make it to the screen so i don't know if some of the stuff in the script are the early parts of season eight or like there are things that are on the curtain floor of the editing room but I was expecting more, honestly, for this finale, I was expecting so much more from Euron, and it was very disappointing, so, eh, I'm over him. You know, the whole thought that he's going to Essos to bring the Golden Company, like, it's just, eh, like, I don't want it to be about other people. We see, I think I want to see Euron Greyjoy in his limits, let him shine in his elements, but at this point, this whole Essos thing, I think should be scrapped out of it so maybe i might be overreaching maybe in the next season we might see a lot more from him but at this point i'm really disappointed in the euron greyjoy story so let me know what you think about euron do you think he was like a good addition or anything else do you know my most oh my god moment from the finale little finger dying and not just because you see his dying was hooray like i, I was all for little finger dying because y'all know i was predicting little finger to die since the beginning but I don't I still don't like the way they paid his death because little thing that's supposed to be like this person that has his hands everywhere he like he's outsmarting you. So I get that this is like a moment of like the the student becoming the teacher or the student becoming more than the teacher, but still honestly what I will say is that when I slit his throat, I was so excited. Whatever they make Aya do really makes me question my life choices because I was like, oh lord, he's dead. And for the fact that he's dead was amazing. So bye bye, little finger. You will not be missed. Neither will your conniving ways be entertained any longer. But I think for the Stark children to be together, even though three eyed Raven Brandon Stark is still being a weirdo. I like the way right now the Stark people are together and they are going to fight and not like not even if they won't fight they'll still be like together and everything so you know for the family that has gone through a lot I think this is like a huge comeuppance for the like this is a huge deal for the Stark children because we're rooting for you guys I'm really glad you guys are together now so can we talk about the plot line of bringing of capturing a white and then bringing the whites to King's Landing 
do you know something that's a very lazy plus device by the writers you know i get that like they're supposed to bring all the major characters to one place so that they'll meet up and then they'll talk but at the same way wasn't like couldn't there have been like any other way for it to come about like did it have to really involve catching a white like i don't know who else thought that was a very dumb move because look at how like at the end of season five they went out in the snow you know we had the suicide squad people and then the whole season six when they did that whole you know the whole fight with the whites and the night king killing viserion and everything i felt like is it that the night king the one that knew they were coming or that's a very lazy way to get the people there because the whites uh, it was cool like the, let me tell you the redeeming moment about the whites was when he like threw himself at Cersei and then Cersei was so shook at, at that point I was like that's the first like I think that's the first I had actually seen Cersei be very about something because all the time she's been very and I'm sipping on her wine I really should have brought her wine so that I'll imitate Cersei Lannister but then that's the thing so I think the white coming to King's Landing was a great way and I also like the fact that the white had to come for Jamie to actually see the real and true colors of Cersei. I've been waiting for this since season three. For Jamie to get his head out of Cersei's, you know what? I'm going to move on. Like just to get his head out of Cersei's vagina and make his own decision. And for him to actually leave, this shows that Cersei is really and truly alone. And I am here for it. Honey, you deserve it. But at the same time, if Jamie's going to the north. Who's going to kill Cersei? Because we all know she has to die. So is will it be by the baby? If not, I don't, I, I really don't want to. I, I want to see if Jamie will come back to King's Landing. Because right now at this point, it feels like all the action is moving to the north, and they're leaving like the south people. Because the south, the only family left in the south are the Tigers and the Lannisters, and the Lannisters too. It just left with Cersei. So you know, we'll have to see in season eight. And oh lord, season eight is in 2019. I feel very sad. I just remembered. Anytime I remember that the season eight is in 2019, my heart hurts a little bit. I feel like I I I, I get I cry every time. Like anytime someone says 2019, I cry. That's how I feel about it. My next thought is who else was disappointed when they saw Riga Targaryen? You know something? I would I would not go to mind all those like you know the animations and the adaptations and the people that draw the stuff because the way they built Rhaegar Targaryen up and I actually saw him also like really annoying like is this him I get it like he's supposed to look like Viserion but I didn't expect him to look that much like him I thought he was supposed to be like the hotter brother he was just like eh so I was really disappointed when I saw Rhaegar Targaryen honestly 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 still it was okay we saw Rhaegar we saw Lyanna and the wedding so it means that Jon Snow is actually not a bastard hallelujah 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 because it's just it's not too much but at the same time I think this you know how people are like oh even if he's not Ned's son he's still the bastard of Rhaegar but at the same but right now it's been confirmed that he's actually the legitimate heir to the Iron Throne and this leads me to you know the little nuggets with the name because John's actual name is Aegon Targaryen and you know how the Iron Throne was formed by the first Aegon so Aegon the Conqueror he's the one that built the Iron Throne and established the whole monarchy in Westeros so wouldn't be so if kind of feel like that during the play in which his real name is Aegon Targaryen and then he's the one going to like destroy the Iron Throne so it took an Aegon to build the Iron Throne and it's going to take another Aegon to bring the iron throne down and i think in the history of westeros they had like five or four aegons and the fact that rega named two of his sons aegon is very irritating he named his second and third child aegon i think at that point maybe he he knew that they had died but still how could you do such a thing this leads me back to the leaked script i read why i saw that his name was going to be aemon Targaryen. so i was like oh like the night watch maester but actually his name is aegon and i think his name being aegon is like a huge deal because you know people are saying that he might be called jaharis Targaryen, or all some, some of those other boring and long Targaryen names but the fact that he's called aegon is like such a huge deal because it means that he's the one that's going to actually destroy the wheel not daenerys Targaryen. which leads me to my next point john and daenerys really though really though really though i hated that scene with all my heart with all my 
all my soul i really hated that scene you know and I, you see i know a lot of people are shipping them still shipping them even though they know incest is wrong we were all here when cersei and jamie we were being disgusted by them and we're all, we all said that, no, incest is not the way to go. But right now, because it's Daenerys and Jon Snow, we are all, oh my god, they look so cute. No, they don't. It's still incest. That's her nephew for crying out loud. How can you both be so disgusting? Honestly, where do you both come from? What makes the scene more depressing? What makes the scene more depressing? Is the fact that Bran was given a little voice over to their interaction. Do you know how weird it is to see people having sex and then finding out that that's his auntie and still people were all here for it how could you not be disgusted by the fact that Bran was saying that oh so the whole thing he's the legitimate heir and then we're still shipping oh yes no 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 john and daenerys i'm highly disappointed in you people how could you do this so my last thought about the finale was the wall was the ice dragon was the white the night king was everything who can agree with me that the night king looked very badass sitting behind sitting on the dragon like he looked like he was born to ride a dragon honey baby like and that's the thing when the wall came tumbling down i was shocked and not shocked that the wall came tumbling down because we all knew that at some point the wall will come tumbling down but the fact that it came tumbling down like that the night skin, I'm looking at you. You're you are really doing well. You're doing amazing. Mm? You're really doing amazing. It's the fact that I, I think when the, when the finale ended, my sister called me and she was like, wait, how did the wall just come down? Like, first of all, the wall was built by magic and dragon are magic creatures. So they'll take magic to take down magic. And you know how we all thought it would be through Bran? The fact that it's through this ice dragon, I'm actually here for it. Yeah, yeah. So my next thing about this Game of Thrones is that there was too much fan service. The whole of season 7 has felt like a fan written Game of Thrones. Like it felt like they were, they were looking at fan sites and then use it to write Game of Thrones. Because I feel like this isn't the Game of Thrones that me personally I have come to like. Because at this point it's like they're trying to like weave all the stuff together and then finish it with a, with a nice bow and then be done with it. But when I started watching Game of Thrones and I got interested into Game of Thrones, I thought that Game of Thrones would be one of those series that would just, you know, leave everything hanging and then would actually be satisfied with it. But right now, it feels like they're trying to, you know, pick out a clear hero and not a hero and like the villain and a hero. And then they're trying to like piece everything together and then at the end of the day, we'll have this nice, great finale. Well, all this while, I actually thought Game of Thrones would end in like some weird off way where like people would just die and disparate like the opposite ends of Westeros and Essos and everything like they'll just die and then they move like or the book will be over, the show will be over. But at this point, the show feels very predictive. Even though like, you know, in the first three seasons, people had read the book so they could actually like predict what that was happening. In the season seven, it feels too predictive, even though there's no text to go by. I kind of feel like we all knew John and Daenerys were going to have sex anyways. We all knew the wall would come tumbling down. We all knew that would well, happen. We all knew this, this would happen. But I felt like they could have, you know, done a lot more nuance and a lot more, you know, the things that make Game of Thrones. <sighs> you know, all those stuff were missing. And I didn't like, I appreciate where they're coming from. But at the same time, it feels like they're spinning on their wheels. So this is me hoping that season eight, 2019. This is me hoping that season eight will actually be more, the story will actually be more, you know, great than the season seven. Because the season seven, a lot more was based on the spectacle and the spectacle was amazing. That ice dragon alone was just, Mwah! it was just really amazing. But then apart from that, the rest of the story, it felt so contrived, especially Littlefinger's death. I mean, this is Peter Baelish we are talking about. So the writing was just so some way. I might be the only one thinking like this, or I might be the only one who is putting like too much mind into it. At this point, I've gotten over the speed in which they are traveling, right? I'm just at like the story from like you know Game of Thrones, looking at Game of Thrones and like looking at how like this like the penultimate is like rushing through trying to put all the pieces together. And I get to sometimes penultimate seasons of shows tend to be some way tend to be like really really horrible 
because they're trying to lead into like the final arc of the whole show and like seasons eight is going to be like well, it's supposed to be one bad astray after another so if the season seven was boring this is me hoping that season eight is going to be amazing if not it will be like a very sad ending to this amazing show because don't get me wrong the spectacle is on point everything will be on point but at the same time it will just feel like they just short change a lot of people why am i ranting about game of thrones i'm ranting about game of thrones like i don't like the show i like the show i love the show but still like that's just how i feel about it at this point in my life another point that i want to talk about the fact that the whole robert's rebellion was built on a lie which leads me to ask so who perpetuated this lie like honestly we need to find out because the whole you know liana was kidnapped and raped and all those other things had to have started from somewhere and at some point i thought it was started by Littlefinger because he's shady as hell and everybody knows that he can start something like that so if it was consensual if it was like that who in heaven's name started this whole Rega had kidnapped Liana and Rega had raped Liana. I really want to find out. Like, I really want to know. So you guys should just, you know, hit me up. So put down your comments. Let me know what you think about this. Because I really want to know who started this rumor or who started this whole thing. So, since 7 of Game of Thrones, amazing cinematography, amazing effects, the visual effects, the special effects, all the effects, all the fight scenes, all the battle scenes were amazing. Time traveling, teleportation. You guys, A1, you guys did well with convincing us i mean there's a show about dragons and night walkers and dire wolves and things so i'm not going to be very particular on like time traveling because i don't i never know people might have one somewhere but as a story on a whole i think there's too much fan service i think it was too much of oh let's do what the fans want let's bring this and this together because the fans have been asking for it and i because it was a little bit too predictive but season 7 was an amazing show like I waited a whole year and then some change to watch Game of Thrones season 7 was it worth it? it was worth every single minute but the fact that I had to wait 2 more years to see the end of the show why? why though? I'm very sad like you can't see my sadness right but I'm very very sad inwardly so I'm done with my runs I'm done with like my 7 thoughts and <sighs> moments but can we just little finger dying i'm really i'm really onto this so i think i'm going to do a little this thing about people dying and also my thing is this why are a lot more people not dead like the only major person that's dead is peter baelish but now i thought there'll be like more people crossed off the list i thought like by now drama moments off off but it's just peter baelish and wait is tom and giants being dead is break down Darian like are they dead because when the world came tumbling that we didn't know if anybody died or if anybody survived but I thought a lot more people would die because we are getting to the end so I thought like the deaths would be you know six and seven the deaths would be like no die 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 but I mean it is what it is but since seven was great and I'm done with my thoughts and other stuff because I feel like I'm ranting at this point I feel like I'm talking too much so yeah that's it I'm done with this amazing show game of thrones is like one of the most amazing shows in this world i feel like it was one of those shows that five years from now we'll still be talking about man do you remember the red wedding do you remember hard home ned stark i feel like it's one of those shows and i'm like i'm really grateful that like we get to see it and like we get to talk about it and like we get to like do all those things that surround game of thrones so if you like this video give it a thumbs up subscribe to my channel leave your comments below let me know what you actually thought about the season 7 finale was it everything you hoped for were you expecting more are you hoping for season 8 are you sad like me that is in 2019 check out my other videos that are going to be posted up here okay check it out and then i'll see you on my next video